Say so weekend comes along and you go to Morecambe. <laughs> <laughs> this happens. It's a little blue in I the sky. I quite like weather like that in a way. I mean, it's not its not ideal for a seaside holiday, but, you know, it's kind of dramatic, isn't it? It's real. Nick, what's the picture for the rest of the UK? Uh, it's weather that's certainly going to keep us on our toes over the next few days. It is very changeable. Sunshine and showers today. Glorious sunshine from one of our weather watchers in Buckinghamshire this morning. But the showers will come along here later today, but they're already across northwestern parts of the UK, as we've seen. And temperatures just in time for the weekend have been coming down as well. The flow of air coming all the way from the Arctic towards the British Isles. So we're in the blue for the next uh, few days. So it's quite breezy as well, enhancing this cool feel to the weather. And particularly today, when the showers come through. Now, they're going to be most frequent in western Scotland, northern Ireland, northwest England. But even where you've got sunshine at the moment, cloud will build and the showers tend to move their way east and southeast during the day. So it's this afternoon towards eastern and particularly into southeastern parts of uh, England and Scotland, there's a greater chance for getting those showers. It's a breezier day as well. These are average speeds. Gusts will be stronger, up to around 30 miles an hour or so. Showers may be thundery, possibly hail too. All of that meaning temperatures are below average for the time of year. But remember, it's not raining all the time. There'll be sunshine in between the showers. The sunnier moments may not last too long, particularly the further northwest you are in the UK. The heavier showers eventually pull away from southern parts later this evening overnight, and the clear skies showers ease temperatures. Well, they're dropping away. If you're camping this weekend, you'll notice this well down into single figures. Some chilly nights this weekend, but glorious sunshine to start the day tomorrow. Still a few showers dotted about here and there. Not as many, not as heavy as they're going to be today. In fact, most will fade into the afternoon. The breeze eases a bit. So Saturday afternoon is in pretty good shape. Many places will be dry, sunny spells. It'll feel a little bit warmer. Then this is coming in on Sunday. It's an area of low pressure and that's going to bring some heavier rain right across the UK. So a spell and in places quite wet weather, very wet weather perhaps on Sunday with the winds picking up as well. You notice eastern areas will start the day dry but even here the wind, the rain will get in as well. Northern Ireland should turn a bit drier and brighter into the afternoon. A day like this though, the temperatures are going to come down a bit further still. So cool, windy, wet on Sunday. By Monday, where it's a bank holiday, where you are, that's out of the way. We're back to sunshine and a few showers. Many places escaping dry, pleasant in the sunshine, the wind easing again a bit. And you notice the temperatures just starting to edge up a few degrees. So it really is a roller coaster ride this weekend. There will be times uh, when you can have some ice cream. There'll be other times when you're thinking, well, the barbecue was a good idea, but it's raining on me. That's how it's looking. Indoor barbecues. <laughs> yeah. In other words, ovens and grills. That's the one. <laughs> Thanks very much, Nick. As he told us, 8.52. So Spike Lee, he's a film director who's never shied away from controversial topics. As a movie maker, you think about Do the Right Thing, and of course Malcolm X. He is back with a film called Black Klansman, and this is a, the story of a young black rookie cop who infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan. I want to talk to him about it. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you, Spike Lee. Thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. Glad to be here. How are you? I always had a great time when I come to London, since 1986. The weather's come for you. Yes, that's, that's what people can tell me. You brought it from New York, huh? <laughs> but you know what that is? Tell me. That's a thing called global warming, which one president that believes doesn't exist. Hello. This is Ron Stallworth calling. Well, who am I speaking with? This is David Duke. Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. That David Duke? God. Last time I checked. What can I do for him? Well, since you asked, I hate blacks. The irony of Ron Stallworth's character right. is that he is a, a black policeman, a rookie cop, in an all-white environment, trying to persuade racist colleagues as well that they need to bring down the Klan. And the language that um, John Washington needs to use when he impersonates the Ku Klux Klan uh, wannabe, it's quite harsh. How did he deal with having to say those words, be that character? That was his job. He's undercover. I hate Jews, Mexicans and Irish, Italians and Chinese. But my mouth to God's ears, I really hate those black rats. And anyone else, really, that doesn't have pure white Aryan blood running through their veins. I'm happy to be talking to a true white American. God bless white America. He's doing his job. He was laughing at it. In fact, there's a scene where he's like, 
hold the phone so his other guys can hear it. And everybody's laughing. So there is humor in this film. And I and as as people, especially white audience members, they're like looking around it's like it's okay to laugh, but they can laugh. I just want people laughing at the end of the movie. I find it interesting that you include Gone with the Wind in the film. And Birth of a Nation. And Birth of a Nation. What did you want to do by including those? Well, those two films are considered two of the greatest American films ever. But they're all two of the most racist films ever, so they went to bullseye. <laughs> and these are all two films that impacted me in fifth grade. We had to go see that film a class trip and in when you graduate film school that was the first film they screened for us and both instances the professors the teachers didn't talk about the social impact of those films do you think that's changing now do you think we're becoming oh yeah you can't teach you can't teach birth and nation now without talking about it led to revitalize the clan and directly led to black people being lynched no, you can't do that today. When's the last time they let a rookie lead an investigation? Oh, that's right. Never. <laughs> okay. Come as friend. Let's get invited back. What kind of stuff you guys do? Cross burdens, marches. This is fiction. It'll be a big year for us. I find it interesting in the film, Ron Stallworth jokes, that David Duke could never be elected to president. That line made me laugh. It made me smile. Intentional. <laughs> we put a whole lot of things like that in the film. My co-writer, Ken Wilmot, that will automatically have people think like, today, today. And we did that because we're firm believers of history repeats itself. This stuff you see in a film did not just happen overnight. The term America First was started by the Klan in the 1920s against immigrants. This stuff was not new. It's remodeled, it's repackaged, shined up, buffed up. It's still hate. President Trump features in the film. Was that always going to be the case? Well, I don't call him that. I call him Agent Orange. Agent Orange. No, it wasn't. He was always uh, August 12th in the year of Lord 2017. And I saw those despicable despicable act of homegrown American terrorism which killed Heather Hare and when I saw that that's when I decided that would be the Dakota for the film but and that was before we started to shoot and you're talking about the violence in Charlotte's film yes that was sparked by far-right activists protesters yes um, clashing with people mm -hmm. who didn't like what they were saying and President Trump's reaction to that his words after that mm -hmm where he refused to condemn one side. He said there were good people and bad people on both sides. How did that make you feel? Because you've used that clip in the film. Well, that statement, the historian's gonna write this is a very significant part of uh, his legacy in American history where the United States sitting president has a chance to denounce hate, to denounce the Klan, to denounce the alt-right, to denounce neo-Nazis, and he refused to do it. Of course, two or three days later, you had the, uh, you know, the retraction, but it's my belief. Whatever he says the first time, that's in his heart. I read a review of this film that said Spike Lee is back to his angry best. And just with you talking about President Trump, I wonder if he's been almost the catalyst for you to come back out with a film like this. After Do the Right Thing, Malcolm X. Here's the thing, though. Do, Do the Right Thing was 1989. Malcolm X was 1992. You know, the, the true story is, I don't walk around perpetual black man rage 24-7. That's just not who I am. And those are the only, only type of films I want to make. I'm going my fourth decade. I think there's just people who want to put me in a, in a particular box. I like to spike lead this. You know, but that's, that's not who I am. That's not everything who I am. That's not the essence of who I am. This film, I think, though, will make people angry in some ways, or at least inspire them well, to make a difference. Is that what you're about? Oh, yes, because we live in a very dangerous time. 
I hope that people realize when they see the film that this film was not just particularly about the United States of America. The rise of the right, even here, in the UK, Italy, France, all over, there is this resurgence of this right-wing mantra where the basic common thread is, it's the immigrants' fault. It's you people. Your reason why we are, our economy's bad, crime, drugs, you're taking our culture. So, this is a, I do hope people see some of the, when they do see it, and if they do, they see it as a, with the global viewpoint. So the film's coming out now. What does, uh, what does this mark in your life in terms of, as a filmmaker, you said, what, four decades doing this now. What does this mean to you? Another film, my body of work. Keep going. I'm 61 years young, and I have no intention of stopping anytime soon. I don't want to be sad leaving your company or having watched the film. Can you tell me how life has become better since the 70s? Since when this, this contemporary film is, is really set in the 70s? What is, better better? Than, what is better today than back in the 1970s? You know what? I know what. I got an answer. Today, there's no such thing. We've eradicated global warming. <laughs> I wonder who you're quoting there. What? I wonder who you're quoting there. <laughs> That's what the White House says. It's frightening. It's been an absolute joy Thanks talking to you. Much. Thank you so much. He has a lot of thoughts on a lot of things, doesn't he? He does. Interesting. It was a fascinating chat, it was. Um, it's just after nine o'clock. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go now to the home of the world's largest indoor rainforest and its big shiny domes. Well, the home is in Cornwall, but the hat is going to have a second home. Yeah, we're talking about the Eden Project and a plan that maybe they'll build another Eden in Morecambe. Breakfast, John Maguire is there for us this morning. Morning to you, John. Yeah, morning Charlie from blustery Morecambe Bay. The dream then to bring what's been such a success story in the southwest. They think it's contributed something like £1.7 billion pounds to the local economy down there, up here to the northwest. And think about it, the Eden Project averages about a million visitors a year. But here, in this part of the country, you've got Manchester, you've got Liverpool, massive conurbations not that far away from here. So what could it mean for visitor numbers? Could we see a return to the days when Marine Drive, when the promenade here was absolutely rammed with visitors. Morecambe is rightly proud of its past. These pictures, almost 120 years old, show just how popular this seaside town once was. And with an eye on that history, its annual Vintage by the Sea Festival, which takes place next weekend, brings in around 40,000 visitors. But now it's this space age vision that could propel Morecambe into the future. This is the Eden Project in Cornwall, a major visitor attraction. And now 